Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to host this in conversation for the 2021 Big Walls and Windows project at Campbell College of Art. My name is Daniel Sturgis, and I'm the professor in painting at Campbell UAL. I'm joined here today by Juan Bolivar, lecturer in painting, Sarah Savage, the BA painting student, who is the brilliant winner of this year's project, Stephanie Nebier from Liquitex, and Lizelle Thomas from Cass Arts, who are our generous sponsors. The Big Walls and Windows project has been running since 2013 and has been an opportunity for a UAL student to realize a temporary work of art that exploits some of the spaces within our colleges. In 2020, we were delighted to expand the project from CSM to Camberwell, uh, and we look forward to both of these projects opening this year. So let's kick off a conversation with you, Sarah. <clears throat> Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your proposal and what made you apply for the Big Walls and Window project. All right, Dan, uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, my project is about travel and about the journeys that we see through the traveling we take to and from places. And these signs almost become like symbols of belonging to a place and how they become like a shared knowledge or a shared understanding. So then it becomes almost like a universal symbol of something. So I wanted to take this journey that you see these different signs and almost compact them into one so that visually you see an entire journey in one image. So it's almost like a it's almost like a one conclusion almost of an entirety. And I guess I applied for it, you know, just to explore the possibilities that you could have with uh, with murals and with such, you know, such a space like, you know, the scale that you can work at and the opportunity that it can bring to the supply of materials and equipment. Can you tell us about some of the artists that you're interested in and if you see a connection between your wall painting and how some of those artists work? Well, one thing I noticed was that I went to a couple of Bauhausian lectures during the uh, 100 years conference there last year. And I think I can kind of see a connection between those experiences of the Bauhaus and, you know, the precision that you can kind of see in the shapes and the colors and the simplicity of that. And I kind of see that Bauhausian precision but also in combination with painterly effects. So combining them both of precise design, but then also an organic natural form, like the sinuous branches and leaves and those effects that you can get with paint. Whereas Bauhaus was always quite flat and bold block colors. But one artist in particular would be Cecil Danel, and she's a Swedish born artist who works in Galway. So she's Irish, Swedish, and she paints a lot of very flat graphic images of nature, of trees. And she, however, always combines those images with man made objects. So you would see little signs that would appear. And uh, I guess it's about those merging of those two elements of the natural and the man-made. That's great, Sarah. Thank you. And good to see you. Uh, congratulations again. Uh, some of your recent work is quite ambitious in its scale. And I was just wondering, was part of the appeal of this project being able to have this big wall for yourself or the idea of like working directly onto the wall? Well, uh, I guess you could say not so much ambition, but more to do with how you can maybe under, like not understand, but acknowledge the environment that other people walk in and work in as well as be inspired by. So by working on such a large scale and in Camberwell itself where students, our students are walking through 
they may see a change in themselves or in their work that they're doing that is maybe possibly being, you know, kind of uh, sourced, well, not sourced, but like a, like a throng of an idea that has originated from, say, the mural that I had painted. So I guess it's kind of like, how do you change another person's environment and how, how do you kind of evoke a certain condition with them? And uh, yeah, even here at home, like I've painted my walls that are almost like mm -hmm. in mountains. So I've always got this feeling of being somewhere sunny and it always reflects my mood that I always feel quite good. And I always, I always feel that that type of environment reflects in the work that I do and the work that I produce. So I kind of think further, I can think much, much further than just a 2D plane. Sure. So, so, so do you think that the theme of travel has been in, impacted by the pandemic? I think in ways that because everything has become stationary, like the whole world has come to a standstill, that even the image itself for it being a stationary image, but yet about travel, you can kind of see that it almost becomes an image of nostalgia or an image of maybe longing for that sense of being able to travel to say a sunny place like you know the Caribbean or even Australia or you know somewhere somewhere like that so um yeah I think the theme has kind of maybe morphed into something something more about the current pandemic and how things mm. are more stationary mm. yeah Thank you, Sarah. Really, thank you. That's really interesting. And what part do you think that the materials have played in informing the scale and the nature and the concept of the piece? Well, one thing, because I haven't actually visualised or not visualised, sorry. No, I haven't actually produced it yet. So I haven't actualised it in terms of how it's going to look in the end. So one thing I have noticed is that one, he recommended using black primer. And I thought that's quite unusual, like starting with a black primer, starting with darkness. But then when I actually think about the whole concept of the things that are happening today, and like I was just saying, like things are basically, they have stopped in terms of traveling. So with the painting being quite colorful and quite bright, it's almost like there is a progression of the um, looking forward to mm. of traveling again and being able to go to and from places. So it's almost like it's coming out of darkness. Mm. It's like the idea is, is, is coming out of, out of darkness. Yeah. That's really awesome. That's, um, do you feel then that during the course of this project, I know that you haven't realized it fully because of obviously everything's been sort of delayed, but the chance to experiment and, as you say, respond to guidance, feedback from Juan, for example, working on a different toned ground than you would normally. Do you feel that the idea is evolving um, and changing? You're having a dialogue with it, as it were. Yeah, it's ever expanding, you could say. Um, do you mean in terms of materials, in terms of well, it's part of the whole process, isn't it? The, the materials, the idea as it evolves, as you start to experiment and test your ideas in response to the materials. Yeah, because there, there would be much more, much more of a breadth of possibilities for, in terms of maybe layering of the image and, you know, kind of working through those, those different layering and you know, very specific, you know, modes for each color, for each medium. So I guess as a, you know, for it to result in something would be that it would all have to come to a certain balance between each medium and each color, because it is that graphic as well as that painterly, you know, combination. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it does beautifully. It's it's really interesting because obviously the what was anticipated in the development of this project has altered, obviously, because of circumstances and yet the continuity and the dialogue that you're creating still evolves. And it's really interesting to learn about this as you're working on this piece. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's been a challenging year. So um, I was thinking, what are some of the challenges that you face in making this piece? I guess getting the precise lines and maybe even trying to get the perfect circle that represents the tunnel, or even to be over painting certain layers that I realized I, I needed so I wouldn't be able to reverse them. You know, very, um, it, there are very forethinking things that I can only imagine because, you know, of certain things like, you know, not being able, like I, I only just got my, my equipment sent over from London there just like a few days ago. So I'm only able to start experimenting with my, with my paints and stuff now. So that was one, you know, one of those standstills that has, you know, hindered that progress. So I'm not sure if I can really fully answer that like, as of yet. Yet, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I suppose once it is complete, how do you hope that the passing public are gonna respond to the work? I think that because it's it's their environment, um, you know, it's that you know they will be the ones experiencing it. You know, it almost becomes their their emotion and their response. So I really hope that it will maybe remind people that although there is so much happening today in terms of the fear and the anxiety of, of traveling going to and from places, home and, and work and school, you know, I hope that it'll bring that sense of, of one day, you know, not having any of that fear or anxiety and that that will, uh, you know, almost evaporate and become a memory. Yeah, yeah. that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, um, a really, really beautiful way of, of um, explaining it, actually, Sarah. Thank you. I mean, it feels a bit premature, really, but I'm curious to know whether you um, feel that this whole experience does prepare you well for future possible site-specific, large-scale public pieces. Yeah, I think that it'll definitely help me to think more about, first of all, like, the fact that it's it's not my piece of work that will be going there, but also everybody's, because I have to think about the people who will be walking through there, and for things such as like time frames, having to work within a specific time frame is something that has to be considered. So I think that all those um, all those like challenges that I'll face you know, in the coming weeks will definitely help gear me for that type of work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they'll give you a much clearer idea, I suspect, of, you know, what what the challenges are that, you know, Lisa was asking in terms of working to a time frame, which normally isn't something that's necessarily imposed on your studio practice. Yeah, like even at home, like sometimes I can come back to a painting year after year and eventually I get to the point where I know it's finished and I don't have to work on it anymore and uh, it's a very happy moment of course and then there's those paintings that just go on and on and on mm -hmm. and I guess they're those your personal paintings you know they become almost yeah. like your friends and you start talking to them and you know you end up having a dialogue with them and you realize everything they've been through in their life you know all the different stages. So I guess with a with a public with a, with a piece of public artwork, it's it's much different because it's temporary. Mm. You know that it will be taken down and that someone else will kind of take over in the next year, in the following year. So there's that temporality. Mm. 
I, th I think one of the um, exciting things for the college is that as the college reopens after this period of um, uh, where everyone's been talking online and teaching online, mm. then we come back to a college where we see someone making uh, a physical work very clearly and sort of boldly right in the entrance. Um, and I think the physicality and the material qualities that you've been talking about and thinking about will be welcome for everyone for the not so in the way the the careful way that you describe the artwork being for a different audience or for not just for yourself but for an audience is also within the making of it that it's for it's for other people to see that materiality again which i think is the thing a thing that people have been craving that's very true yeah uh i i don't know if there are any other questions but um that anyone would like to ask at the moment but i've been um really taken by the care and precision with which you've answered the ones that we've um uh given you that have been asked thank you dan mm. really insightful really interesting thank you sarah oh, so excited yeah, to see it it's <laughs> great yeah i'm looking forward to producing it so we don't have long to wait before we see it. So um, it, we're looking forward to it enormously and it will be wonderful to see it being made, but also to see, uh, see it once it is, has been made. So good luck with, um, with that. Um, and it's a big undertaking, but I'm sure um, it will be marvelous and it really exciting. Um, so thank you, Sarah, again. And thank you, Juan and Stephanie and the for joining the conversation. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing the final piece, which will be on display for the whole of um, next term at Camberwell. And congratulations again, Sarah. It's mm. wonderful that you've um, won this prize. And thank you to Liquitex and CASARTS for their support. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks to CASART and Liquitex. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Sarah. Congratulations. Yeah, well done. Thank you. <laughs>